Hi, this is the unboxing and product review of the LG CK43 Mini Hi-Fi. There's the remote, user manual and some batteries and an antenna for the FM radio. Right, so there's the Mini Hi-Fi with its two speakers. And then your country specific power cable. Alright, before I get into the detailed uh, functionality review, I'm just going to show you the uh, sizing. You're looking at 30 centimeters and you're looking at the cross section, the side, you're looking at 23 centimeters. And then the height, you're looking at under 17 centimeters, you're looking at 16.5. So if you're going to put this under a table or on a shelf, you can see that this is uh, quite low. However, the speakers, you can see, are almost twice this, uh, the height. The speaker height is going to be sitting at under 31. It's 30.5. And the width of the speaker is 20 centimeters. The depth of the speaker, uh, including the woofer, uh, the like woofer uh, housing looking at 22 centimeters. What you will notice is it's made out of this uh, chipboard So it's not just plastic. It's got a melamine cover so it won't scratch easily You can see there you can wipe it. This is something you can wipe very easily. The front is just a uh, uh, cheapish plastic it's got this uh, covers here you'll take them off you can see there's a very shiny here this is a uh, the tweeter this is the woofer five and a half uh, five and a quarter inch woofer um, this is just plastic and there's no steel here at all there are two portholes over there looking quite aggressive just by the way you know the coloring this uh, it feels like mica and uh, the tweeter, if you are interested, is, is paper. This is a paper tweeter. Don't uh, be confused. That doesn't mean it's poor quality. Uh, there are some very high-end uh, speakers that use paper tweeters. All right. What you will appreciate are these uh, rubber feet. You do not have to stick them on yourself. They've already been stuck on. Uh, above average construction of this speaker. Just looking at the main unit, you've got your left and right speaker. You do have an aux in, and there's for the FM antenna. Keeping in mind, there is no headphone jack. So you cannot connect a microphone or a headphone to this unit. Looking here in the front, you can see uh, it's also got these rubber feet. Uh, this unit is very light. Uh, this has got a bit of a cheap sound when I plug in the memory stick. It does sound like I'm putting it into an empty plastic container and um, there's a memory stick. Now having a closer look you will have a remote control that comes with the unit. Just having a look at this exhaustive remote control which is great. I've used it at varying angles and it works fine. Uh, the power button, the eject for the CD tray, volume up, volume down, presets, function. The F button over here is a match to the F button here. So you can see there's a lot of duplication, although you won't find the uh, sleep and the set and the clock function here. So if you want to set your clock, which you're not seeing here because it's a bit too bright. Let me see if I can uh, adjust that. There's the, there is a dimmer. So if you're someone who wants to... Um, use this as a clock you are welcome to because you can dim it if i show you here if i press the the sleep function there is a sleep and you see it said dimmer and then you can set the sleep sleep means that it's going to play for 20 minutes or however many minutes you set it for 10 or off so now i've set it off and then what happens is it'll play your music based on whatever you're using the cd player the memory stick or the fm uh, also the augs in 
and also TV. It's got a TV link. And we'll play for about half an hour or whatever it was set to and switch off. I, can, I cannot confirm that if the sleep can work with the TV, but I can confirm it works with the USB, CD, FM. Right. Now, just having a look at this uh, remote control, you can see that it's got the equalizer button, which is matched to the E. You see it says here, special EQ and equalizer. Now, if I press the equalizer button, it's got the, right, it's got the standard bass. Then it goes to pop music. Classic, rock, jazz. Now it's got a few extras which are uncommon. Football and then standard. Okay, so that's standard. But now then it's got special EQ. Now look at that. This is Axe, Salsa, uh, Certainage. I'm not sure what that is. Foro. Um, I think there's even Arabic. Yes. Uh, Dangdat. Afro. So you can see that there's a few uh, EQ options here which affect the sounds. A lot of DSP on this device. So you can see that they've got EQ and special EQ. But now when you look here, you will see that it's also got search and OK. Now you might be wondering what is all this. All right, so let's break this down. Now, having a look at the unit itself, you can see that you've got quite a few buttons here. You've got two USB ports. There you go. And this uh, mini hi fi has got an option of recording so you can record from one usb to the other and i'll show you how that works what happens is whatever you're playing here you press and hold the usb record button so what happens is let, let me get it going you'll press the f button f is for the function you can see it's got tv fm radio cd there's at the bottom usb 1 usb 2 aux bluetooth LG TV. All right, so let's put it to USB 1. Right, so I'm going to press play. It's going to be playing on this USB. Now what I want to do is I want to record. So there's some music playing now. There's the music. And I want to record from there to there. So what I do is I press the USB. Right, it waits. It's getting ready. Then it just starts recording. Boom, that's it. So if I go to the next track, there must be something in the world. Then it's literally just recording what I'm hearing. So that means that if you've got a USB here, whatever you're playing here, you could record here. So if someone has a playlist on this USB or a mixed uh, track, a mixed uh, entire uh, song sequence, then you could just get whatever's here onto here. So it's almost like in the old days when you used to have tape to tape. You could really dub one tape to another. All right. When you want to stop, you just press and hold the USB record button. And then what it'll do, uh, there you can see it's finished. It says record complete. And uh, you now can pull this out. You can go and listen to it uh, if you want to. And you can. It'll, all it'll be is what you've just heard. The one track and I forward it to the next track. So even if you're playing and you do a search function, it will actually record whatever is playing. However, if you change the volume, this is the volume knob on the right-hand side. This is one of the things I really like about this is quickly change the volume. I mean, I love this analog wheel. All right, so if you change the volume, it does not affect the record. So the record is gonna record the data in terms of the music, but the volume does not get changed. So if you're listening to it at 14, and then you make it louder for the next song, it's not gonna have any impact on the uh, recording. Okay, so to recap, you've got USB 1, USB 2. And yes, you can use these USBs as a charging cable. Uh, you see it says the charging ports, 5 volt at half an amp. Look, half an amp is not a lot, but it is enough to charge some phones. All right, so there you can see I'm charging. It's acknowledged it. Uh, there we go. All right, so those are the two USB. The CD works like this. There's the eject button. I have a CD in there. Uh, it does play WAV files, because you know in the old days, the CD was mostly WAV file, and then obviously it does play MP3. It's written right there, uh, CDR and RW. That means if in the old days, we used to also burn CDs and then make our little uh, mixed uh, CDs. So you can play a rewritable CD for those who are still doing that on the uh, mini half fires. All right, so there's the CD. You can see it's got the track number. What I really like about this is if you switch it off, notice that it's on track 14 at one minute uh, 54. Let's listen to it. And then I change to the USB and you press play and now it's gonna be playing from this USB. And if I go back to CD, 
clever boy key. Look at that. It can still remember where it was. So this is intelligent. And you press play and it remembers where you were last playing on that CD. So I've got no issues with the CD. Uh, one thing in terms of the physical aspect here, if you notice the CD tray doesn't come out very far. I'm not sure why. You can see it's almost midway. So you kind of really have to like grab the CD. There is a little finger hole there. So you have to, I don't like that. It should come out more. It almost like it can come out more but it stops about there uh, for me i don't like that it, you end up scratching cds when you're putting them in and up all right so let's close the cd tray now most people are going to be buying this for the usb so let's look at the usb features it cannot play flac or wave files now i've put a usb here which has flac and wave files and it will not read it um, there's a folder there which I have put there with the FLAC and WAV files and it does not read it. It kind of skips that folder and it only sees the MP3 files. And how you can test that is you can actually go function USB 2. How do I know it's USB 2? There's a little 2 underneath there and there's a little 1. So 1, 2, and left, right. Okay, so it's a Western orientation. And then you can see there, there it says 28 file. And this is something really nice. It's on the unit, on the left-hand side here, it's got the special eq but here it says search and okay now if i press search look what it says file and you can kind of uh, uh scroll through all your songs look it's got a single line lcd so don't expect it to uh um to give you a long list it's just one line and unfortunately it would have been nicer if it could have been a bit longer but keeping in mind the price point of this uh, lg all right so there you go look at all those songs and then that is the uh, root folder and if i say search again it says folder now i've got i've got another um uh, I've got another artist there and it uh, happens to be Depeche Mode there it says Delta Machine and I say okay so now it's acknowledged that folder of a Depeche Mode band and then I can say play so you could have 200 folders here and you could just say search press it twice to get to fold and you could scroll right through your folders i um, mean if you just want to search for a file there you go so i really like that and it's matched over here as well so if you want to search uh, you can also do that on the remote over there it says preset and folder so if you want to say root there you go and file record so you can pretty much control the unit including delete there's a delete function there but i'm not about to delete my music all right so the usb works really uh, well uh, also intelligent i've had some radios where if you've got other files on the usb it for some reason won't play i've had a jvc where on the usb there were some uh, word documents and pdfs and the radio would not play the music so this one i've tried with other media formats like a video and so forth and what the lg does the ck43 is it looks only for the music the mp3 file so it's intelligent it won't jam up i've also had a radio which i reviewed when you press next to too fast it kind of just jammed up this one you can see it's it won't respond very fast look i'm pressing it many times but you can see it's not counting as many as i go look let me press it five times one two three four five look it's it didn't it didn't count for but it doesn't jam up which i like so you're going to press it at a medium pace you can't just if you want to get to song 54 you ain't gonna uh be able to do that very quickly all right i wonder what happens if you press 54 here so possibly on the remote you could do that because if i press track two and i say okay Okay, there we go. Yeah, wow. So the remote is giving you shortcuts. So very intelligent remote. If you know the track number, if it's if it happens to be like 125, you can just put it in. All right. Now looking at the uh, next feature, which is going to be this volume knob. Now, how loud is this thing? Now, what I'll do in this review, and I know I'm doing a lot of talking, but let's do an exhaustive review here. I'm going to measure the SPL. And I'm going to show you how loud this thing is. Because remember that even if I play it, you're just really hearing the response of that camera that you're looking through okay so 
the F button is for the function. You scroll through all the menus. What I don't like about this is this F button has got the same profile as the next button, the back button, the stop button, the eject button. For me, the function button should have been in the middle here because that's something you'll press a lot because maybe you listen, listen to aux, maybe listen to Bluetooth. So that the placement of that button doesn't make a lot of sense to me. All right. Uh, this is the auto DJ, which means it's going to interrogate your USB and do it at, uh, and uh, kind of like shuffle it. Um, let's, let's show you that. Right, so there you go. Auto DJ is kind of just, this is old, a, a new word for shuffle. All right, and there we go. It's shuffling it and it's going to play. Now, it's also got something called a wireless link, which means you can take a few of these, press and hold here. Then it asks you party link mode. You say yes. And then it says, do you want this to be the main unit or kind of the slave unit? And then you say, okay. And then this takes the form of the other unit. Now, this is where the app comes very uh, handy. So this is the app here it is All right so here is the lg app a uh, very useful app by the way so what will happen is on the side here there it shows me bluetooth and can you see these are all the functions these are the 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 functions available on this unit lg tv cd usb1 usb2 augs and so forth so if i press augs1 uh, sorry, if I press USB 1, can you see, look what's happened. It's actually synchronizing the music that is on the USB to my phone, meaning I can interrogate the file structure via the app. This is great. So I don't have to go and look at this tiny little single line. I can now say, okay, I want to listen to track number 10. There we go. And you see how it changes on the uh, unit itself okay so great now another thing you might want to know is about the clock now to set the clock you do it from the uh, remote and you'll just say there it says say um, clock and you see there it's clock and you can set it yeah i think you press and hold it and there we go and then it's these buttons on the side here so you can set the the time the 24 hour if you don't like that all right I'm not going to get into too much detail about that you can set it what i'm trying to show you is that this is a cool feature imagine someone unplugs the power cord look at that unplugged will it remember the clock settings the answer is yes and no now this is a pet peeve i have because if you live in a country where the power goes off or someone bumps a cable uh, you have to reset all your alarm clock and then what must play when the alarm comes on but check this when you plug this back in if your phone is not on and the bluetooth is off then it will not remember the clock function however if your phone at any point pairs with the device guess what it does it will then take the settings which it had remembered you see here i go to settings and look here at the bottom right you see there it says alarm i can switch it on and that was my setting and then uh, it says yeah sleep timer and there's the sleep timer options and then it takes the clock of the uh, cell phone so look what happens now if i go and i press um, clock uh, there you'll see it remembers it even though it did forget it but as it synchronized to the phone uh, guess what it remembered it well it re-updated it on the uh, menu system all right so now for some sound tests here are the speakers i'm going to put them a bit further back so i can get an spl meter here this is a sound pressure level meter what it does is it measures the loudness of a signal now keeping in mind that loudness does not tell you about sound quality so we mustn't get hung up on the SPL but it does give you a good indication of the volume of the unit so I'm gonna just set this now uh, this should be about a meter away from the speaker but for this test I'm just gonna put it on the table nearby and I'm gonna play different types of music now what I normally play is some uh, female vocals because that like that's a very good test of the dynamic range now this is not a very expensive radio so your expectations have to be managed you can't expect this to compete with a Bose uh, mini hi-fi but let's give it a try anyway right I've set it to standard which hopefully is a flat response on the uh, the frequency spectrum
right, so that's the female vocals easily, easily, go, easily going over 100 decibels. But how does it sound when you play something like heavy metal? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some heavy metal. I'm going to set the EQ to, to rock. There we go. And there is a little button here for bass boost. It's a, it says bass blast. Let's check it. So interesting, the microphone is was too uh, weak for the sound test, uh, maybe it was too close to the speaker, bringing in, introducing a bit of noise. Yes, there was a tiny bit of distortion on this, the LG, but mostly introduced from the recording microphone being a recording uh, when it was above 110 decibels. Alright, so the rock is great. Now, you might be wondering why I've still got these on. I'll leave these on to show you the movement here. You can see the air is pumping out of here aggressively. When I press this bass boost, it does bass blast. It does make quite a significant difference. All right, let's put some house music on. All right. Okay, the maximum volume is, I think, what is that, uh, 40? And I think at about 30, you're still safe. When I say safe, I mean, it's not distorting. But from about 33, depending on the type of music, it does hit a bit of distortion. Uh, keeping in mind that we easily went over 110 decibels, noting that 120 becomes pretty dangerous for your ears. Actually, extended periods of over 80 decibels are dangerous for your ears. Uh, but obviously, people don't follow that. Okay, so that's the sound test over. Now, you'll just have to take my word for it because obviously, you're not going to be able to appreciate the sound unless you are sitting in front of it. What can I say? Well, I can say that this is very impressive. Now, obviously, you need to know about the room. I'm in a fairly big room. I'll quickly just show you what it looks like. Right, this room is more than 20 square meters. Now, you might be wondering, why have I got this teacup here? Well, actually, I put it here because when the music was playing, the bass was hitting, the uh, tea here was actually vibrating. The remote was vibrating on the table. This is not an extremely sturdy table, but I can tell you, I've only had one other radio that has done that before. That it's vibrated the table uh, uh, forceful enough to actually move things on the table. You may have heard some little crackling while the bass was playing. That was the stuff on the table that was uh, moving around and adding a bit of noise. Right, I did say I'd go through these specifications, which I will do in a very fast voice. Now, it says it's 300 watts. Please don't believe that. That is peak music power output. That is a non-scientific bogus term which is just used to entice consumers in order to purchase the stuff now if i wanted to take that 300 watts and try and convert it into some useful power outage power um i could divide it by 10 so i'm actually get about 30 watts and that would be the real power uh if you want to look at the 300 watts what you would need to do is say all right 300 watts well, how did they get that? Well, they took every single electronic component here and added its peak power. Now, please, a capacitor inside here, the laser inside has very little to do with the sound that you are going to hear on the speaker here. And also, this the speaker here might be 30, maybe 25 watts RMS. And this one here might also be 25 RMS. Scientifically, we'll just say it's 25. You don't add 25 plus 25. And if this tweeter is, say, 15 watts, you don't say 25 plus 15 plus 25 plus 15 plus plus. That's not how you work out wattages. So anyway, I would say that this is probably about a 45 watt RMS, a uh, 45 watt true uh, continuous power, meaning you could probably get about 45 watts here uh not 300 all right moving on see it says 150 watts times two uh looking at the uh display it's a single line the um power consumption here it is 
50 watts, which means that the power that it's asking from your plug, when you plug it into the electricity, the maximum it's going to ask is 50. So there's no way it could give you 300. This thing's not a generator. It's not generating power. It's not making electricity. Uh, all it is is using it. So it cannot be more than 50. That's why I made a a guess of about 40 to 45 watts remember there's some losses and it's probably using a digital amplification so it's probably quite um, accurate in terms of its losses it's probably uh, very efficient all right so 45 watts uh, in the in terms of the true power uh, it does have a phase lock loop tuner. So this is the uh, FM tuner it does not say anything here about AM so it just says FM the media formats on the CD player, you can see it's an MP3 uh, Windows Media Player. So it's a WMA and then just the, uh, what's it, the WAV file, which I did test and it does work. All right, then these are the size of the speaker, five and a quarter inch woofers and the tweeter is 1.57 inch. Speakers are running at four ohms. That is quite useful to know. Four ohms is more of a punchier sound, it's got allowing more current to flow through that uh, woofer. So it's obviously going to give you a little bit of a more higher bass response response where it's going to 8 ohms uh, is giving you more defined the amplifier will have to work a bit harder like higher voltages with an 8 ohm load so 4 ohms kind of closer to your car audio sound that's why I said it's a little bit punchy it's a little bit muddy the bass is there for sure um, but it's not the most defined sound but anyway as I said I'm not going to knock the sound I did think it is a good sounding unit so there you see I've given you the specs and there is uh, one or two other things I just want to show you which are probably we never highlighted is that it's got this um, multiple play which means that many people can uh, I think three or three people can uh, join and actually add to the playlist but you have to do this via the app okay to sum up what do I think well at this price point I have yet to find something that can beat this LG CK43 keeping in mind that I am not affiliated to any company and I do not take any sponsorships this is my raw review and I give this a thumbs up if you're looking for high-end sign where you can appreciate of dynamic range across all the frequency bands then don't get this this is not going to give you that. This is the type of device where in the old days we had a little loudness button to give you good bass and good treble if you're looking for very defined mid-range where you're going to be listening to a lot of jazz and you want to hear each individual instrument, well, this is probably not the best uh, product for you. But keeping in mind that something that will be uh, for, for that type of sound, you're going to be paying at least $500. Now, this device here, this LG has a really good sound. I would say that it's got a great sound at this price point. In terms of the bass, look. If you're going to have a big room and you're going to put this in a in a in a like a hall, well, you it's not going to work. This is for a room of about 20 to 25 square meters, and it is loud. Yes, if I walk to the other side of the room, the sound does go down a bit, but you could easily have a party with this device uh, playing in a room of about 25 square meters. Yes, if you want more bass, you're going to have to get the one with the subwoofer. Now, why do I say that? Because Keeping in mind that playing it on a table like this is fine, but the minute you're having a party and someone walks past the speaker and there comes his big fat jacket and it covers the speaker like that, you know, when somebody walks past the speaker, it's going to reduce the sound considerably. So take what I say with a pinch of salt. If I say you're going to be able to have a party with this, keep in mind that the minute the room fills up with people, the sound's going to drop about three decibels per person who walks in the room, especially if they are close and blocking the speakers. So if you're going to be having a party, maybe get yourself the one with a subwoofer. But if it's going to be just some mates hanging around, um, there's no problem with this. But if you're going to be dancing and walking in front, well, then obviously these being front-facing, they're going to take a bit of a knock. Because I did notice that when I walk across the speaker, you know, you block out this tweeter, it does impact the sound quite a bit. But that is true of all sound systems. And the reason why I'm saying it is the bass on this is so good that you really just want to have a party. So that's why I'm giving you that disclaimer. All right, so what do I like about it? Excellent bass for the price. 
made out of wood okay we call it a chipboard but it is actually still wood so we've got chipboard here um, these are not junk this is not junk this is a fair attempt at a low-end uh, sound system the app works great it's an intelligent unit I'm not in love with this layout here I feel like auto DJ being a shuffle button doesn't need to have the prime real estate why you put that there LG should be there or maybe on the top not there this should be the F button and the F button should be a different color because it's kind of like a meter button meter button means it's like if you look there you can see this is red this is red because that button kind of uh, is more important than all of these buttons and you see the buttons you use the most are kind of standing out volume next track you see so that's supposed to be like a standout button why the function button is so uh, similar to the rest is defeats me okay anyway other than that this is a great unit I'm sure that if you're playing it loud for more than 10 minutes I'm sure it's got a built-in a little heat control there is no fan on this one but on the uh, higher model there's a built-in fan so I just wonder how good this would be if you had to play it at like a 75% volume for 45 minutes that I have not tested. Okay, the CD player works fine. This is a great unit. I give it a thumbs up. I will compare this to some other uh, radios that I've got. I've got some Panasonic, which I'll compare. Overall, I'm going to give it to LG. I'm going to say this is a damn good attempt at a mini hi-fi. Well done. And I suddenly forgot I wasn't very descriptive on the sign. You're, you're getting this, um, this paper tweeter, which is not piercing. Why am I saying that is because some people are going for like a horn type tweeter, you know, these Bluetooth speakers, and it actually hurts your ears. Now, the treble on this does not hurt your ears. So you can go quite loud, and although the treble is, uh, is, is loud, it doesn't pierce through your eardrum and you feel like blood is going to come out of your ears, but it's still loud. And that is why I like this approach. However, for some reason, it still has uh, what we call a piezo sound. It still sounds quite electric. It doesn't sound very warm. Um, the bass is very high. The treble is... When I say high, the bass is strong, the treble is present, uh, the mid-range is there, it's a little bit over the, uh, a little bit muddy, so it's, I can't really discern the individual um, octaves, I can't really discern the individual notes here, but I can say that this has got good sound. It's not, it's not that I'm saying it's a bad sound, I'm just saying to what level are you looking at. Um, I listen to, uh, my home system is a set of Bose 301s. Those are pretty good speakers. And the amp I use is a NAD, NAD. I mean, the, the, the sound that I'm looking for is very good. And the minute you start playing jazz with lots of instruments, you can quickly hear the, the weakness of a sound system. But this guy here, this CK43, he's done a really good job. I played the house music. The sound was good. Look, obviously, that's probably what it's made for. Bass and treble but the female vocals were pretty good as well i can't really knock it i did put on the standard i was trying to bring out the mid what is missing here is the ability to adjust the bass like you could say bass one two three four and treble one two you can actually adjust bass treble mid i have not found that so if i go special eq you can see how i can scroll through all the different eq some of these i've never heard of i mean i've never heard of a meringue anyway um but there isn't an option to say, okay, uh, parametric, like mid, go up two notches. All right. So that brings you to the end of this review. Um, if you're looking at this device and you're wondering if you should get it and you do like some loud music, you ain't going to go wrong. If you're somebody who listens to rock music, this is good. If you're someone who listens to house music, this is very good. If you're someone who listens to female vocals and opera um, this is a good for the price point, but uh, then you're in a different league and you need to look at something at least $300. Well, and also the sound must be good, but it's not, this is not going to be your, your product. Okay, so thanks for watching and cheers.